Good afternoon. My name is Dean Maserol, the mayor for the city of Leominster. And um, this afternoon, um, we're off and running. We've got uh, new numbers that we'll share with you. And um, just a couple of uh, housekeeping issues here and that may be helpful. Um, if you're trying to reach a certain department, whether it be the school department or the city, and you're having a difficult time or somebody's not getting back to you, um, could be some confusion. But uh, just give us a call at, at City Hall at 978-534-7500, extension 0. Right? And then at Emergency Management, 978-534-7500, extension 5055. That puts you in touch with them, and um, they answer pretty much anything you need to know about COVID-19. And if there's food or whatever is needed, um, they're there to help you out. Mails on Wales, 978-345-8501. Uh, well, Mr. Veteran Center, 978-534-7538. <clears throat> uh, state assistance, again, for those that might have just become unemployed, uh, mass.gov forward slash DUA, and then also uh, for those uh, contractors or unemployed, uh, mass.gov PUA. Family Health Line for Nursing Home Patients, 617-660-5399. Let me just switch over here. Um, again, I'll go by this one particular slide. <clears throat> Red Cross still needs blood donations. 1-800-RED-CROSS. Library is open. I'll go through that in just a minute. Here are those agencies that are open. Uh, growing Places over at uh, Lemister Senior Center from 11 to 12 on Wednesdays. Um, Catholic Charities, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. Ginny's Food Pantry, Tuesday through Saturday, uh, 10 to 1. And then we have Emergency Management delivering food uh, in partnership with uh, Emergency Management. Uh, these are our cases as of yesterday, but I can give you the update in about 20 seconds. So if you look at those numbers... I'll keep you busy. And we have, um, so yesterday's number in Lemister was 262. We, we went up one on the active and then on the uh, complete. That's the number we want to keep growing. Those off the list uh, because they have no symptoms and have been quarantined. That's up four. So that's up four. And that's 561 total. And there are 12 deaths total. Uh, in Leominster. So that gives you those numbers. And I'll, I'll repeat them again um, a little bit later for you. This is our afternoon briefing, and uh, thank you for watching and tuning in. There's a stay-at-home stay advisory change to a safer at-home advisory, which means over, uh, people over 65 who have underlying conditions, you know all this. All residents advised to leave home only for health care, worship, uh, permitted work, required to have face coverings, wash your hands, 20 seconds, so all information you know. On the reopening, strongly advise businesses to reach out to us as fast as you can about your reopening plan. Don't wait till the last minute. Um, we have... We, we sort of talked to people, we've been talking to people for over a month and a half, uh, but I just fear that at the, the last minute, uh, some businesses will you know, come in and that isn't going to um, help us because that workload will be pretty uh, intense. So the quicker you can uh, get us that information, uh, we will be grateful and we'll be able to help you all a lot much better and a lot faster. Uh, so tennis courts in Lemons are open. And there's some conditions there. All of this information, again, is on our website. And then also take a peek at the, uh, you can call the uh, Recreation Department at 978-534-7529. Don't forget, Lemister Public Library is doing curbside pickup. You can get all your information by going to 978-534-7522, extension 3. You can also email them. Either way, they're doing pickups, doing returns, and they have a whole system set up. So... Uh, Yes, so there you go. Curbside pickup begins today at the uh, public library. Ball field information right now, just those who are working on the fields are allowed on the fields. 
We're hoping by, uh, I guess, the 6th or the 8th that they'll be opened up for leagues to start practicing. But again, we'll watch those numbers. Leminster, finally, we've got some good numbers, and, and it seems to be maintaining and sustaining itself, so that's, that's good news. Um, if you need supplies and you're a business and you just go to uh, log into mass.gov and go to reopening and you can purchase any of these things here. They have a bunch of vendors around the state that are working with the uh, state of Massachusetts and uh, hopefully their prices are reasonable. No matter what the phase, and you know there's four phases, no matter what it is, nothing's really changed. Sanitizing, keeping your six feet apart, wearing a face covering, cleaning protocols. There's the dashboard for the state. That tells us what's on a go and what's on a stop. Uh, positive trend up top, in progress in the middle, and uh, negative trend. So I don't see anything that's negative trend, but I don't exactly see those colors anyway. Again, reopening is going to be uh, determined by these factors. Seven-day average of positive test results. Three-day average of hospitalizations, hospitalization usage of ICU surge capacity, and three days average of deaths by uh, death, date of death, and that seems to be happening here uh, in the city. So, uh, good afternoon to everybody, and uh, I, I would have to tell you, it doesn't look like it, 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 something happened between Thursday of last week and today. There was actually more traffic in North Lemonster today than I've seen in a long time, and uh, I would have to say that um, hopefully most of, you know, everyone's following the guidelines, but there was a lot of traffic out in the streets today. I mean, a lot of traffic this morning started out with, uh, you know, Duncan and all those places with the line. And uh, there couldn't be a larger or longer line down at, um, at, at Starbucks. But it was, uh, I'd have to say, it's, it's, I think people have had it or whatever it is or just, you know, the weather. Or, I'm not sure, but I, I can just hope that everyone's keeping their distance, right? And let's go back to some more slides here. What's already open? There you go, there's a list. Churches, office, uh, including Boston. So a lot, looks like a lot more office situations today. Car washes, recreation, outdoor with guidelines. All of, these, uh, all of these slides are on my website or our website, lemister-ma.gov. Phase two, uh, start gearing up. This is what we're saying to the businesses. Don't sit back. Call us on, uh, you know, two Fridays from now and say, yeah, I've got to go over my plan with you because... We're just so busy at this point. Uh, we have been back full uh, since May 4th, and there's a lot of work to do. You'd be surprised. You can't just shut a city down, and city government just in these situations uh, just can't shut down. I, I, we might not be police or fire or whatever, but we are certainly essential. And if you only knew, you know, the birth certificate request and marriage license and death certificates and just the calls that we get at the mayor's office and every single office. Uh, is busy, and if you can imagine, more uh, people are home, they're working on their yards, they're putting up fences, they're putting in pools, they're doing work in their house, they need permits. And uh, City Hall is basically, it's not open so you can walk in, but anything you need, we'll, we'll get for you, we'll get it to you, we'll email it to you, we'll bring it up to the parking lot. Um, it's kind of like Sonics. Did you ever eat at Sonics? Kind of order your food, and then they come out and bring it to you? Same sort of scenario, and it's worked, and it's worked very well. Um, haven't heard any complaints at all, and uh, we hope to continue on until we can get the official word. And even then, we may take a little longer to open the doors at City Hall, but I could just tell you that we're at full capacity. Everyone's back, uh, and we were on a 10-day on a cycle. We were five days on, five days off. But uh, at May 4th, when it was originally everything was supposed to open, we had planned for that, and then we went to full um, staff. So... Uh, if there's anything you need, by all means, let us know. What can open in phase three? Uh, where sh and a lot of this is going to be based on the data. So if we see, uh, so uh, the state data list is we're up 422 across the state. Um, the governor's got to be looking at these saying, you know, this is positive. But then we had this warm Friday and Saturday. Sunday was kind of, you know, iffy. And, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, and Monday was a little iffy. Uh, but it's going to be something they'll watch. And if the data looks bad, it looks like we're heading back, then they're going to sort of probably slow things down. So that's why it's so important for us to uh, kind of cooperate. So we can get back to 
um, arts and entertainment, casinos, fitness gyms. Uh, but this is it for a couple of more weeks. So if you want to check on the guidelines that CDC has set for our different institutions, they have one for schools, workplace, restaurants and bars, youth programs and camps, mass transit, child care programs, etc. Right? So there you go. Go to cdc.gov uh, cdc forward slash coronavirus, and you'll find um, all the information that you need. And it's pretty standard everywhere. And we are seeking about $3.6 million for the CARES Act from municipal government. We're seeking $1.2 million from the CARES Act of Lummis to Schools and reimbursement from the federal government on all COVID-related expenses. That could add up to a $1 million. Wendy's putting the file package together. That's got to go to the states, and we need all departments' information to be uh, uh, included. And that is uh, soon, still uh, soon. Um, if you're looking for grants and you are a business, we have 34 applicants so far. That's, uh, it, it, we've got to get, we've got to do better than that. There's $2,500, I don't do my quick math, but $2,500 times 30 certainly doesn't come to $272,000. So if you're a business or you know a business, um, really urge them to go to our homepage, lemonsthyphenmamite.gov, and right in that center section there, you will see, um, you will see the, the grant section there, and I would strongly advise you to fill that out. So if you have a relative that's in business, uh, or maybe it's somebody that you, um, you, know, you know, and it's like, hey, did you happen to you know, file for that grant? Because this is a grant. This isn't something that you have to pay uh, back. So right now, we're not even halfway. We're 90, that's approximately 90,000, I would say, right? That's in those grants. We have 272 to spend. And we really hope that people take advantage of it. And, and really, it's, I think most, most people are going to be eligible. You have to be in business for a year. It must be a for-profit business. Must be a limit to business impacted by COVID, which is everyone. Must provide a business or mortgage uh, lease uh, uh, obligation. And it just goes on and on. So fill it out. Send it in. And we'll help you with the rest. Uh, state opportunity for limits to small business. Also, go to the, our website at lemmister-ma.gov, and you will see the state treasurer's grant program. Again, that is something that you don't have to pay back. But you know what? This is coming to an end. Deadline is May 29th, and it's, it's over, as they say. Let's look at the numbers. Look at every single day since the 27th, it looks like, the 12th, the very beginning of uh, May, we had that spike down, then it went back up. But since then, it's been coming down regularly, and that's what they've been looking for. That's in Worcester County cases. There's the dashboard for public health indicators. Seven-day period, average of positive test rate, certainly coming down 69%. Three-day average of uh, COVID-19 patients in the hospital. That continues to drop, and the number of hospitals using surge capacity is dropping as well, along with the three-day average of deaths in the state of Massachusetts is now, uh, again, not a huge drop, but it is definitely dropping. Daily and cumulative confirmed cases. There's that line that shows you we're doing more testing, but you can see that um, the number has drastically dropped off since May 22nd, drastically. So let's hope that continues on. There's our testing by date, numbers of tests performed by date, uh, uh, patient tested. And uh, there's the number up top, which gives us the cumulative test performed by, um, by patient cases by county. You can see more and more of the state is getting into that light blue. That's what the governor wants to see, that real powder blue on the left. And we're in that sort of midsection there. But again, it's something we have to look at later on about the density of one area. Well, it only makes sense. And it's why you see Essex and, and Suffolk County and Plymouth County uh, suffering so much. There's our hospitalization rate. Right now, uh, confirmed cases uh, in the hospital at 2132. And uh, the count of cases currently in ICU is at 576, which again continues to drop. There's your deaths in confirmed cases uh, of the COVID-19, uh, 6,416. It looks like it's slowing. Hopefully, we don't get anywhere close to 7,000. 
cases and ca uh, case and cases and, ca and case rate by uh, age group, and that's the rate per hundred thousand. You see, though, it's it's actually uh, gone down in terms of the average age. But if you look on that right hand side, some of those numbers have gone up. But that's just because of more testing. On the left, it shows you by age group that like the flow, everyone's getting it. But what happens is when you look at these numbers of hospitalizations, that changes a lot, right? There's the confirmed cases by age group, but when you look at the confirmed cases uh, hospitalized, it, it doesn't really affect those younger people under the age of, uh, you know, 50, 60. You know, you got 214 cases across the state total. Not that that's not a lot, but it's, it's but see where it jumps? Once you get to that 80 plus, that's really where the hospitalization rate jumps, and right now it's at 68. And then when you get to deaths, again, when you look at the per 100,000, almost insignificant, almost, uh, I mean, I keep hearing stories about kids that get sick from this, and, but, but not a lot. I, the data is, you know, I see the stories, but the data tells the story, and there aren't many that, it, you know, deaths um, confirm cases that are in their sort of young ages, and so you see a little bit there in the 60 to 70, but then the 70 to 80, but it really spikes up at, at uh, over 80 years old, and the, the average age is 82. And there's your deaths by county. Male, female is pretty much the same. Um, death with previous hospitalization is pretty much the same. It was 56% last week and 98% with those with underlying conditions. Cases, hospitalization, and death rates by race. Um, clearly, I, I'm not sure the answer to this. I'm sure there are greater minds, but um, I think in every community there's a disparity, and it does impact those um, with, uh, by race and ethnicity. Long-term health care facilities. Uh, out of the 5,600, we see almost 4,000. Uh, deaths in long-term uh, care facilities. So as, you know, everybody says, well, we were listening to the scientists, and the scientists were looking at the data, and the data said clearly, and this isn't the Monday morning quarterback, but maybe somebody understands this and can help me, is they were saying this really affects, you know, elders, and we really got to ramp up the hospitals. But, I mean, it's clear that, the, that somebody, some experts or health care people or Somebody in the data industry came and told us this really affects elderly and then didn't get ready for where the elderly live, the most vulnerable and those with pre-existing conditions and those that have been hospitalized. The writing was on the wall. So I, I get nervous when everybody says, I'm listening to the experts because they missed that one and they missed that one with a wide slot. So that wasn't a close one. That was a, a, a big miss. And um, so... We'll go by that data, total hospital capacity. You can see it's increasing. It's another thing the governor and everyone's watching for is when this all started, it was to make sure that there's, there's, we're not overrun, that we don't have the cases in the hospital that we can't handle. And that's why they opened all these other sort of backup hospitals, which they barely used. And so uh, Health Alliance still doing tests, very organized. Uh, you get up there, they move you right through, 10 to 2 on weekends, but 8 to 4 on Monday through Friday. Need to have some symptoms, though. And, uh, and, and if you have symptoms, or maybe if you don't, but you've been exposed to somebody that does, and they've test positive, then you can go up for a test. I would suspect next week that they'll begin to ease on uh, begin, beginning to give even more tests, but begin, uh, begin to maybe start looking at the most vulnerable population, even though they haven't tested, you know, even though they haven't had symptoms, and maybe encouraging them to come in to get tested. Uh, so I see that happening, and right now it's as because the ch cases are going down, and if that's the case, then there's more testing available, even through tracing and tracking. So let's see what another week or two w uh, brings, but I would assume it's the most vulnerable, and then we go by priority, and then uh, all the way down to, to me. And if you're experiencing, again, you're a Reliant uh, customer, and uh, you just call Reliant, tell them that you think you should get tested, tell them why they're going to put you on the phone with somebody that's going to go through this with you anyway. And then at the end of it all, uh, they'll tell you whether you should get tested or not. Local updates, transfer station is closed on Saturdays. 
last week for yard waste pickup. Dog license renewal extended to June 1st. Starburst has been postponed until August 21st. Graduation will be August 1st. And that is subject to the approval of the Board of Health, and they have to submit their plan. The school department needs to submit their plan to the Board of Health, and the police, fire department, and emergency management, and that is because we are under the state of emergency, and we have a large group, and we need to make sure that every precaution is taken uh, before approval will um, be given. Well, Mr. Tax as well, they are due. I know it's been a, you know, nice not to have to pay them for the last month, but they are due June 1st. We would absolutely appreciate it. That is what we count on to continue to run this operation until uh, the end of June, beginning of July. And you can make those payments uh, by going to our website, lemons-ma.gov. You can uh, leave them off in the mailbox up top, not the bottom of the stairs, but at the top of the stairs. There's a mailbox up front. You could put your payment in there 24-7. Um, also, you can do it the old-fashioned way and just mail it, right? I buy a lot of stamps. I like mailing things. It may be old-fashioned, and people say, well, how come you don't pay your bills online? I do. I pay some. But I like the whole idea if I, I know another person is going to get that mail. I know it's not a, 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 a mail operation. It's going to get, like, thousands of pieces of mail. And so I like to mail things that I know are either small businesses or people that I know. And when you mail those things, and I always get those veteran stamps and sometimes fun stamps and flower stamps and all that. I think it's, I think it's the last bit of interaction that we have um, because everything is email and social media today. Also, uh, back on that slide for, the, um, for anybody that's got a water bill or a saw bill or an excise tax bill, I got my excise tax bill today. Whoa, just short of $1,000. Ugh. I need that can place to open up, the Redemption Center. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, we're giving you to the end of June for, to, to make those payments, June 30th. So great program down at uh, uh, Infinite Design. They've done a wonderful job at Infinite Design because they're taking all of your, as you're cleaning your house and you come across these laptops, electronic devices, bring them down there, they'll wipe out the memory. You don't have to worry about what's on it. They're gonna just delete it right away and uh, then they're gonna reprogram it, reboot it, and get it to a kid uh, who otherwise would never have this uh, electronic device in their home. And guess what? They get to keep them. They get to keep them. I don't know where I'd be without internet today. I mean, just in a moment's notice, you can look up just about anything. What's that noise, you guys? You hear that noise? Somebody's yelling, hello. I don't know. It's in the background somewhere. Hello, back to you. Uh, love the mail system. Postal employees rock. Yeah, isn't that amazing that they, um, somebody's, somebody's yelling down there in the hall. I don't know if they need something. Uh, doesn't sound good. Uh, but anyway, Comcast Essentials Program, uh, free internet, for two months, as long as you have a customer for uh, Comcast, for three months, they'll give you two months for free. Call that phone number right there. Let's see if I can bring that up. Okay, there you go. 1-855-846-8376, and then it's $9.95 a month after. Take advantage of this. Seriously, it goes till June 30th, and I know a lot of people that took advantage of it, and, uh, you know, before they were, they were, they didn't have any internet. So especially if you're in a family with children, uh, call us, we'll get you hooked up to a, uh, a laptop or an electronic device, and you do this part, this is your part, and if you know somebody that's not, just in a very nice way, say, hey, I heard about this program that you can get a uh, computer, and you can get a free hookup to the internet for two months, and then it's $9.95. Similar checks um, for those without direct deposit, there you go, just go to the IRS and click on non-filers, and if you meet this criteria, they're going to send you a check. Registry update, get a lot of calls for this. They've extended some things, but just to be sure, go to the website. If you absolutely have to, because you can't find what's on the website, or right here, just go to our slide here. Go to lummis magovernor look at the slide. Driver's licenses and ID cards that will expire in June have been extended until October. And, and yet, all I hear from people is, I've got to get my birth certificate because my license is going to expire and they have not... Um, 
they have not extended it. Well, they are. If your license is going to expire in June, they've extended it to October. This is why it's so important that we're here to share this information because there's so much misinformation. Anyway, if you need to go to the Registry of Motor Vehicles you, and you, you really have to go, then 857 368 8000. And time, oh, you know what? I got my stethoscope, I got my mask now, I got my hat. I got to bring it next time we do a, one of our updates. But uh, it's time for Dr. Mazzarella's um, boot camp. Assume you have the virus, assume everyone you know has the virus, assume everything you come in contact with is somehow or another compromised, wash your hands, cough into your elbow or wherever, but don't uh, do it on your hand because then you pass it on somewhere else. And that's just good proper hygiene 12 months of the year, right? 52 weeks, 12 months, all the time, right? We all learned a little something from this. Hopefully cold season, which I get whacked. I just get nailed during cold season. And um, so hopefully next year, um, it won't be so bad. But anyway, follow those and wash your hands, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Clean things frequently, cover your mouth when uh, you cough or sneeze, and stay home if you're sick. Thanks for donating. There have been so many generous people donating time, finances, goods, masks, you name it, and uh, we'll get a chance to thank them at some point. Don't forget, Plenty of uh, senior shopping hours all over the city. Make sure you call check first. And restaurant takeout, we've done very well with restaurant takeout here in the city. And uh, I, I can just tell you, I wish I could visit every single one of them. And maybe by the time this is through, we will. But in the meantime, uh, we have a list on our website, lummis-ma.gov. Was that guy OK out there? Oh, OK. And uh, so if you have to go out, maybe that's where everybody was going today, visiting one of our parks and uh, visiting the trails. But it didn't look it. So I don't know what everybody was doing out today, but um, I, I can just tell you, keep your distance, right? Keep your distance. Keep your patience. 26 miles of hiking trails. Barra Park, Carter Park, Evelyn Hashi Park. We were there last week. Cormier Park, Manusnock Brook Greenway. I was there today. Uh, Monument Square, Prospect Park, Mechanic Street Park, Sholin Farms, and Doyle Field. Don't forget to fill out your census. I will go back and uh, read one more time. I'll give you the numbers for today. Here uh, are the state numbers. Let me give you those. Here we go. State numbers. Um, total cases, uh, 94,000 total cases since this all started. And it's 422 cases today. Deaths in the state of Massachusetts, 57. Total tests are about 550,000 people have been tested. And it's up today about 5,000. Worcester County is at 10,577 cases. We're up 72 today. Lummis is active. Uh, cases went up one today from 262 to 263. And those coming off the list, meaning they are... Um, they have once tested positive, but now are off the list because they are cleared to go and have been quarantined and all that is done. It's a total of 561 cases total. That's 263 active currently and 298. That's the number we were hoping for. We're hoping that that number, the second number, which is those removed, is going to grow while the other number drops. And that seems to be the pattern. Let's hope over this past weekend that, you know, this is the fear that this past weekend people sort of thought as a free day. And, uh, and, and, and got a little more relaxed, and now we'll see the results of that. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Twelve deaths in the city of Leominster thus far. And let's hope it doesn't grow a single one after that. So that's, uh, that's our update. I told you I'd get this thing. Where's Bradley? I told you I'd get this thing down to almost a half hour. Hey, if you have any questions at all, um, you can email us. Uh, you can message me on Facebook. You can call us at 978-534-7500, extension 0. But um, please reach out, and if for some reason somebody didn't get back to you, some, it's just the workload uh, on the city side right now is pretty incredible. It's, 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 high, the, it's high level, high volume, and somebody might have missed you. And just let them know, just remind you, I haven't heard from you, and uh, we will not be upset by that. That's a, a very respectful um, reminder, and we don't mind that 
at all. So all projects are moving forward in La Mista. Just talked to Anthony Cleves over at Whitman and Bingham, uh, speaking, uh, talking about the fields behind the high school, working on projects all over the city, down on Willard Street, down on, uh, on, on Merriam Ave, down at the Mechanic Street Playground, and there are projects everywhere, and uh, maybe one show we'll just uh, talk about projects. But we're out of time. Want to thank you, and uh, oh, we had cases here from Health Alliance. Health Alliance is down to 24 total and six in ICU. So that's Health Alliance at 26 and six at ICU. So we're not out of the woods yet, and it's still, I mean, if you do nothing else but these simple things, keep your distance when you can't, put a mask on, wash your hands, sneeze in your arm, stay home if you're sick. If you can do that, and that's like, to me, that's, that's the... That's something that, uh, that isn't all that intrusive, and I'm willing to do now uh, so that we can get this behind us. And uh, so anyway, uh, remember, be kind, be generous when you can, be nice, be grateful, be well. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock.